Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday training call. As usual, we have some crazy rock stars on this call. I am so stoked about this call because we've got um, just people that are killing it right now. And the tips are priceless. Like the last three weeks, three to four weeks of Zooms on Thursday nights have just been awesome. Like I've gotten so many messages from people saying that something that they've heard or learned on one of these Zooms or just hearing somebody's story have resonated with them so much and it's really helped them in, in their journey and on their business. And you guys, I just was thinking about the fact that it is June 25th, which means we have a few days still left in this month for you rock stars that really want to set a goal and reach it. And I think sometimes we set goals for ourselves so that we kind of stop working for them if we're not close to them. Then you set a new goal. And that is one of the things I always encourage people to do about the 25th of the month is kind of look and see where you're at and then set that goal for where you want to be at month end. And it doesn't have to be a rank, guys. It could be I want to sign my first customer by the end of the month. I want to thrive free, which is what I hope each and every person on this Zoom will do is at the very least you will get your two customers in so that at the second of next month, on the second, you will get your account loaded with your free product credit because that can help so much in growing your business or just getting the product to yourself. So at the very least, I hope that is a goal that you set for yourself. Um, and maybe it's an amount of, you know, if, if you're at $5,000, maybe you want to be at 8,000. Maybe, you know, if you're at 12,000, maybe you want to be at 14. So set a goal. Don't just hit a mark and then give up or think you're too far away from the original goal you set. Reset that goal because it's just inching along. That's what every single month is, is setting a goal and inching along and you will reach that, that place that you want to actually be at. If you're constantly setting those new goals and inching along every month. And my favorite call um, is this call because we get so many different people on sharing their tips and stories and you get to hear a little bit of everybody. And what I love too, is that we have so many brand new people joining our team. Um, it's insane. Like every day I look in the back office and I'm like, Oh my God, this many more promoters signed today. And so constantly new people were getting on these zooms and they're plugging in for the first time and they don't know, um, a lot of the leadership. They don't know, um, the people on this team that have been with us for, you know, almost four years and their stories. So what I like to do with this Zoom is bring on um, a, a 200K or an 80K that's been on the team that they can share a little bit of what they're doing and their story. And um, then some people that are just killing it right now, whether they're just getting started or maybe they've been in a couple of years and their business is just getting going again. Um, that's what I love about network marketing is life happens. And in life happening on this journey, sometimes we have setbacks. But the cool thing about this business is it's always going to be here for you. Whenever you decide to restart it, jump back in, get motivated, it's going to always be here. And what I'm hoping is that you guys see the momentum we're in right now when you take advantage of it. Um, and we're going to start off tonight um, by interviewing our first guest. If you guys don't know who Amanda Arnett is, if you're brand new, Amanda has been with me. She's probably like one of my favorite people on the planet. Um, and a lot of yours too, if you're on our team. She is someone that's been with me since, gosh, um, my third month in. The third month after I started, Amanda joined the team and I literally cannot even imagine for one second what this team would be like without Amanda Arnett. Like, can you imagine that, you guys? Those of you guys that have been here, it's kind of crazy to think about what would our team like be like without Amanda. And she's so amazing. She always shows up. That's the one thing that I think I, I appreciate about Amanda the most as far as business goes, is I don't ever remember a time where Amanda isn't showing up, no matter how busy her life gets, no matter, you know, through weight loss surgery, through going, you know, nursing again, it doesn't matter what is happening in Amanda's life she never not shows up. And that's what it takes to be a millionaire in, in network marketing. And that's what it takes to see success. So tonight I wanted to bring Amanda on, especially for those of you guys that don't know really Amanda's story and how she got involved in network marketing. And Amanda, I'm going to bring you in 
And we're going to do like, you know, obviously we've got a lot of guests tonight, so we're going to do the quicker version, but I definitely want people to hear your background and who you are and what you're about so that they're familiar with you. You're always going live in the Dream Team 2020 page. You're always, you do a Monday night call, which every, so many people plug into. It's one of my favorite Zooms. And not only that, but you are so real, so transparent and people love you. So share with us a little bit about who Amanda is. For all our new people. All right. We got to mute people there first for a second. Oh, hold on. Well, you know, I mute people out and then I don't know why it just don't work. <laughs> I'll get sidetracked the second I open my mouth. All right, guys. So, I mean, Lisa, way to, way to introduce me, right? <laughs> I mean, geez, wheeze. Um, no, I'll, I'll tell you guys, the thing is, is that when I got started in this business, um, in this industry, it was seven and a half years ago, and I I have such a, a full circle moment happening right now for me because when I got started, um, I I literally found it because um, I my car was repossessed. Okay, my husband had been laid off; he had been working, um, you know. And anyways, I started picking up at a second hospital, and I was working full time as a nurse um, at one hospital weekend midnights, and then I was working per diem at another hospital. Um, and I would do that two to three extra days a week. So I was working sometimes five or six days, 13 hour shifts. Um, and the one hospital was a little bit further away. So add in that time. And basically I was never seeing my kids. I was never seeing my husband and my income just wasn't enough to make up what we lost from his, um, whenever he lost his job. So we ended up having our car repossessed in front of my house. And I can remember the day we pulled home and I was with my neighbor and I watched my car get pulled away. And it's like, man, like I did everything right. Like I, I went to school, I bought a house. We just had a new baby. My daughter was only one at the time. And, um, here I am, I'm like losing it all. And I was getting foreclosure notices. And you guys, I was like, what more could I do? And then the student loans started hitting. And I was like, do I go back to school? Do I go for my master's? Like, do I apply for a real estate license? And then my mom reached out to me and was like, hey, um, you're, I don't know if you'd be interested in this, but like your cousin's doing it from online and she just earned like a $10,000 bonus. And I was like, what's she doing? <laughs> what's she doing online? Cause like I had never really knew what network marketing was or direct sales was. Um, my only exposure to this industry, um, was like seeing people like with Avon pamphlets or selling Mary Kay or, um, like Scentsy or whatever. And all I could think about was, Oh God, I don't want to have parties. And I definitely sure as hell don't want to order a bunch of products and have to deliver it to people. Cause that is just not my jam. And to be honest with you guys, like my dad always lost the candy bar money when I was a kid. So I like, I was so afraid that I'd lose the money from people's orders. And that just wasn't my thing. And I didn't have time for it. Like, I was like, there's no way I don't have time for this. So anyways, um, I talked to my, my cousin who was, who my mom introduced me to. And it was, I'll just tell you, I sell, I sold wraps. And, I, and my first question was, do I just have to sell these wraps? So, like all I have to do, because if that's all I have to do, I can do that. Like I can do that. And back up just a little bit more prior to becoming a nurse. I was a, I was a licensed esthetician. So I, and some of you guys didn't know that, but I was, um, so body wraps, skincare, I was like, heck yeah. Like this is right up my alley. Like I can do this. Right. Um, but anyways, long story short, I started Googling like what all this stuff was. And I immediately, I think this is super important for you guys to hear. Um, I immediately before I even decided to join, I was figuring out what I needed to do to make my money back. Cause I knew I had to buy a starter kit. It wasn't free to join that company. Um, it was $99. So I was like, okay, well, if I take the supplies that come with that $99 kit, I can sell $25 um, times four. Cause you got four wraps. I could sell 25, 25, 25, 25. I just made my money back. But then I decided I was going to buy one of their upgrade packs, which was like another $150, but it came with two more boxes of wraps and two box and a box of facials. So I was like, well, I can sell this stuff and I can keep this stuff and I can use this as demos and for my own self. And so like I came into it already thinking without my cousin even telling me anything. So it was like a business, it, like automatically clicked for me. So I want you to think about that when you have somebody coming in, especially if there's somebody like 
me who was in a tight financial bind, helping them figure out the breakdown of how they can immediately make their money back. Because if so, they're more likely to invest, okay? And that's what happened with me. So that I figured this out and then I seen like this other package and I was like, well, crap, I could get all these extra products plus have more to spend um, and use for myself and I'll make all my money back and we'll be golden, right? Um, so anyways, I started immediately Googling like what network marketing was, how to reach new people, like all these different things. Um, and I started plugging into our team pages. Now we didn't have Zooms or anything like that back then. We had a call a couple times a week. Um, but for the most part, guys, um, people were doing like parties and things. And, and with my schedule, I was kind of like, mm, I don't know, I'll book them, whatever. And I'd sign like seven customers at a party and um, all, was, all was merry. And I'd post about people joining my team and I like spammed my timeline. And I did that for probably the first two or three months. People would join me, people would quit, people would block me, people would unfollow me. I was like, whatever, I just kept on doing it. And then I hit my first rank and then people were like, ooh, like what's happening there? Um, and I realized at that point that if I wanted to continue to grow, um, that I needed to reach more people because I live in a small town in West Virginia. For those of you guys that don't know, um, it's definitely a very broke area. Um, there's not a lot of job opportunities. In fact, our hospital that I used to work at just closed. Um, it, it, there's just, there's just not a lot here. Um, it's very poor income area and, um, it is what it is, right? Like there's a lot of people um, that are on assistance and poor, poor, woe is me. Um, don't want to work and get a job and go to school and, and do all that jazz. So, you know, they don't have a very good income. All right. And so that's always to blame is that they don't have money and they have tons of cars parked in their yard, but whatever. Um, the reality of it is guys, is that I knew that I needed to find a way to reach new people. Okay. So I immediately was like, what kind of books can I read? Like, what can I do? And I tell this all the time, but 45 second presentation, um, and, um, your first year of network marketing were the very first two books that I read. Um, and those two books, especially the first year of network marketing, um, really set me up for understanding that people were going to join me and people were going to quit. And I couldn't allow myself to be determined, like what I did be determined on their actions. I had to keep on going. Okay. And it also made me realize that if I wanted to grow, that I was going to need to expand my network. And I was going to need to do that on an intentional basis, day in, day out. Okay. Please listen to that. Because some of you guys are just posting to the same old, same old. Some of you guys are just adding people frivolously and you're not making any connections with them. Some of you guys are just like every day, like, oh, I'm going to check off my list and I'm going to make my post and I'm going to do this, but you're not doing it with intention. There's a difference. Automation and intention are different. Okay. Automation, there's no passion. There's no caring. And you're not going to connect with people. But when you're doing it with intention, you will. Okay. So anyways, I'm trying to fast forward through this. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. I got my first event probably about six months in. I had to reschedule my um, schedule at work. Um, I was able to finally, my first goal, my first goal was for me to be able to leave that per diem job. So I needed to make about five or $600 extra a month in order to do that. I could do that by selling wraps. I could do that um, by hitting a certain rank, um, you know, and I knew that my income would be around a certain amount. And I did that. I set the goal that I would sell so many wraps every month, kind of like you could with, um, you know, our three day minis set a goal of how many three-day minis you need every month to be able to pay that bill or to pay those groceries or to pay whatever it is, like maybe your kids dance, whatever that goal is for you, set that goal because that's what's going to keep you motivated when you don't feel like doing it. All right. So about six months in, I got to my first event. And at that event, a girl was talking about how she had gone from working at Walmart and being on food stamps to making five figures a month. That was my first probably time that it dawned on me that what I was doing could really replace my income. And it was like, whoa, I can do that. So um, my very next rank was probably about what a 4K rank is here. Um, and I, I just made the decision. I'm going to go 4K. 
like, I'm going to go, it was Ruby. Um, I'm going to go Ruby by the end of this month. So I literally sat down, I charted out what that looked like, who I would need on my team, what I would need to happen on my team. Um, and we would go from there, right? That very next day, I was so intentional. I signed three new promoters, filled in the rest of my boxes. And I went Ruby that month. The very next month they announced conference. Well, I heard at that event, I get to conference. So I was like, I don't know how the hell I'm going to do that. So I started figuring out again, selling wraps, um, what I would need to buy my ticket, what I would need to buy my plane ticket. I didn't know how the hell I was going to make it happen, but I knew that if I didn't make the decision to do it, I wasn't going to. So I just made the decision. I didn't overthink it. I didn't even talk to my husband about it. I just like said, I'm doing this. I'm hopping on a jet plane at like three o'clock in the morning and going to Florida. I don't know. I've never flown a day in my life. I don't know what the hell's happening. Here's this little West Virginia girl driving to Pittsburgh and like hopping on a plane lost as could be, but I made it. All right. And then I go and I stay in a room with a bunch of people I don't know. And it is what it is. But at that conference, I realized there's these people on stage and they're like talking about like five figures a month and how last year at this time they were like, whatever. And I was like, you know what guys, I had already gone through so many different periods of times up until that point, like our systems had changed, like people had quit, um, all this stuff, but my team just kept on growing because I kept on showing up. And even though my leadership, my leadership was not the most directional, I guess you could say, I decided to take it upon myself to be that leader. I decided to take it upon myself. I didn't even care back then what my rank was. I didn't care any of that. I was like teaching people how to work Instagram. I was, oh, and that's another thing that was a game changer for my business was um, at that three month mark in June of 2013, um, I started my Instagram. And that Instagram changed my business. It changed my life. And to be honest with you, I beat myself up every day for not working my Instagram. Like I used to work my Instagram because I was solid intentional for three or four hours every single evening. Um, when I was off from work, intentionally connecting, posting, talking to people. And, um, I signed, I mean, you guys, I, it was nothing for me to sign like 10 customers sometimes in an evening. Um, and that's just real talk with you. It's like when you set your intentions and you're just going after it, and that is exactly what you're trying to do. That's when you're going to be able to close. Those deals, right? So, Oh my goodness gracious. That's like my brain just went crazy whenever that sound happened. Um, but anyways, so my very first year, I did not promote super duper fast through the ranks, but um, month 11, I went to conference and it's like I had that aha moment of belief that happened. Um, I walked out of conference and I promoted three ranks um, immediately. I went from, I was an Emerald, which was like a right between like a 4K and a 12K. So I was like at that Emerald mark. Anyways, um, that next month I went Diamond and which was like a 12K. And then I went double diamond, which is like, um, like in between 12 and 40 K. And then I went, um, triple diamond and that was over a three month time period coming straight out of conference. And it was mainly because I had built up like this energy and this excitement. And you guys want to know what I did? I was able to leave my full-time job. I was able to come home and for the first time ever spend a summer with my kids and, that to me was like everything. So then I set a new goal. My next goal was to bring my husband home because I, we had worked so many off, off, like odd schedules that I was like, okay, so this was my first goal. Now I have to literally, like in order for me to bring him home, I need him to be making a certain amount. Um, and it was a scary thing for us. It was a scary thing, but I also want to include that I spent my money frivolously. Okay. I think that's super important for you guys to hear because you need to spend your money wisely. When you've never made money or you've never um, earned a significant income, especially with this industry, you need to learn to spend your money wisely and invest it in your business so that you have tax write-offs and talk to somebody about that. Um, and I'm telling you that because so many people live in like a scarcity mindset versus an abundance mindset. And for me, I've never really worried about it because I'm like, you know what, I'll figure it out. Um, and my accountants always yell at me and I end up with penalties. So anyways, uh, just real talk. Like I want to have that conversation. Um, but anyways, I'm trying to talk through this really quickly, Lisa. Um, I continued guys to set goals for my business and I had to continue to show up every day. Um, and I set that goal and I was able to bring my husband home the following year. I promoted to ambassador diamond, which was 
basically between um, an 80K and a 200K or a presidential diamond. Um, and at that point, I was in the top 150 money earners in my entire company. I had, I was making more money than some of the like top, top rank ambassadors. Um, and it was because my team was like doing amazing things. And I had a lot of personally enrolled, like what would be 12 Ks um, and so on. I was able to bring my husband home and I was also able to get my dad an apartment and to move him um, closer to my kids. Now this is where my story gets a little bit shitty. Um, and I hope I don't cry because I'm going to try not to cry. So anyways, my dad um, has had a lot of health issues and I was a daddy's girl growing up, but my dad's roommate had passed away. So anyways, my dad wasn't taking care of himself and they thought he had a stroke. And that's when I said, you know what, I'm, I've had enough, like I'm moving you here. And I was making enough money that I could get him a little apartment next to a gas station. Um, so he didn't have to walk far. And um, he was just right down the road from me and my kids. It was the first time my kids had ever had um, their grandfather around. So anyways, um, that meant a lot to me to be able to do that. My dad, uh, was diagnosed about six months after that with pancreatic cancer. Uh, in fact, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer as I was hopping on a plane to go to conference, um, in Florida. And that was in February, 2016 same conferences that I'd gone to the years previously that had motivated me and pushed me towards my goal. But that year, it was a little bit different because as I was sitting in that conference, my mind was just thinking like, I'm going to lose my dad. And you guys, there is absolutely no amount of money in this world uh, that replaces time. Nothing. So I got through conference, I came home and my dad was like a different person because they had started him on medicine and started his chemo. And um, I, he went from being a fully independent person to somebody that needed 24 hour care. So I took on the role of a uh, caregiver. Long story short, my dad passed away six months later. Um, three days later, a business partner really screwed me. That would be my cousin. She's a bitch. Anyways, excuse my language, but it's real talk here. You need to realize that people in this business, um, you need to realize that there are going to be shitty people and you can't allow those shitty people control you. Okay. You just, you can't. So, um, but I did, I allowed it to defeat me. And I allowed um, the toxicity to get to me. Um, and I started to have to make some pretty big decisions. Um, and to be honest, you guys, my leadership stopped showing up for me. Like my team stopped showing up at this point. Um, they kind of started turning their back on me. Um, and I was going through a really rough time in my life. Uh, like, anyways. So... In about October, after uh, 26 leaders that were supposed to show up at a leadership retreat that I held, uh, only five of them showed up, I decided like I was going to have to make a decision. And I was being offered, I'm going to be honest, you guys, I was being offered by companies to come to them. They were wanting to pay me. And um, at the time, one of the companies was offering me $10,000 a month that they would pay me if I came to them. And uh, I needed that money. I needed to pay my dad's funeral bill. I needed to pay my taxes, everything that I'd put off that previous year. Uh, I said no, because being the person that I am, I wanted to earn whatever it was that I was earning. Um, I didn't want it to be given to me. I wanted to earn it. And I wanted to be able to teach a team how to earn it too. So I decided that I was going to do what I knew how to do best. And that was go back to nursing. Um, and so I went back to nursing full time. That was in uh, October, 2016. And uh, I worked October, November, December. And I realized at that point, like I was exhausted. Like my mind was not okay. I was having anxiety attacks nonstop. My marriage was on the rocks. Um, I was severely depressed. It was definitely affecting my children. Uh, and about that time is when I was going to make a decision that I was going to go to um, that company that originally had asked me, but I wasn't going to take, um, I wasn't going to take the bridge. I was just going to do it. I was just going to join it and I was going to earn the ranks the right way and 
Uh, if we had to file bankruptcy, we had to file bankruptcy, but at least I could sleep at night, right? Then I was talking to Jamie Pekka one day and she was like, you know, Amanda, I know you don't want to do this because like you think it's a crack patch and I did. Um, but you know, will you at least give it a shot? Will you check it out? Will you get on the phone with Lisa? And I was like, sure, whatever. Lisa was like talking about sleeping. She was talking about folks, all these things, guys, that honest to goodness, um, had she said anything else, if she had just talked about energy or talked about weight loss, I wouldn't have been interested because that's not where I was at. I wasn't at that. I wanted sleep. Like I wasn't sleeping. I needed to be able to focus. Like my brain was so scattered. Like that's what I needed to hear. And that's exactly what Lisa said. And then, um, Jamie was, you know, being Jamie <laughs> was like, Hey Amanda, there's this bonus that they just launched. Want to race me to it. And for those of you guys that don't know, Jamie and I were sidelines in our previous business and we raced to that, um, to a rank, uh, and I beat her by the way there. <laughs> I beat her there. But anyways, I signed up with her and she did beat me here, but I did not follow very far be behind. Okay. And, um, I was working full time. My husband was working. We were going rotating shifts. I was doing zooms in the, um, I was doing zooms in my med room in between med passes. Um, I was signing customers and promoters in the middle of the night when I was supposed to be like on lunch break or peeing. Um, like it would be Australia promoters. It would be, I mean, people all over the place, you know, and I just never made any excuses. Like if I was going into work, I was listening to a call on my way home. Um, before I started hitting drive, I was making a post. Like I was constantly having my days planned out and I just made it work. Okay. And on my days off, I was on calls. I was doing zooms. I was doing lives. I was posting. I was showing up. I was supporting my team. I was helping answer questions. And that's just the way it is. Okay. I would buy personal development books every second I got. And to be honest, I am not a reader. I hate to read. Let me put that very clearly. I hate to read. I am a listener. I like to listen. So I listen to um, less brown all the time. I also just like listening to music. It calms me. It keeps me sane. Okay. So whatever it is that you need, and then I might read a couple pages in a book and then I move on. Okay. So do your personal development on what it is that you need to personally develop on um, and go from there. So when I tell you like, yes, I hit, I hit 200K here in nine weeks. Um, and I want to make this very clear. I did not have team that followed me from my last business. Like my team was sitting on their hands. It's going to be real. My team wasn't doing anything. Like they weren't. They were just sitting on their hands. And um, I'm not saying my entire team was like that, but a lot of them were, and there was a lot of toxicity happening and a lot of people that were listening to, uh, my cousin and, you know, some other people. And it was just, it was a really rough time. And yeah, <laughs> so that's, that's that. So I didn't have a lot of people that joined, um, right away. However, because of the impact and the things that I had done prior to that, um, even though my team wasn't working all this, t all that time, um, I was still coaching and teaching people and sharing tips and um, giving it out to everybody on social media. Okay. Like I did not hold anything back. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to keep this secret sauce to myself because I'm the only one that wants to succeed. No, I've always been, if I learn it, I want to teach it because I want to help as many people as I possibly can. Okay. And because of that, and Lisa also is very similar in that respect. Um, and I know that for a fact that that's why Jamie reached out to Lisa and talked to Lisa, okay? Because Lisa would give tips all the time, all right? Um, she would like do Tuesday tips and she'd post it on her social media. And Lisa's not even big on social media, you guys, but those Tuesday tips were game changers for people. They would change your mindset. It would change the way you approached your business and work, right? So I did the same thing and um, I would lead different, you know, groups and chats. Anyways, lots of people followed me um, like on social media. And because of that, a lot of people learned to know, like, and trust me. Um, and people started reaching out left and right because I came hard. I went hard. I set a goal. I said what I was going to accomplish. I went in, I accomplished it. And people on my team were accomplishing it left and right as well. 
you guys, when I tell you that I show up every single day for my business, I show up every single day for my business. And I'm not playing with you when I tell you this. I have a very strict schedule. And to be honest with you, today I've already wrote two papers, submitted two discussion boards, taken one test, and I'm in the process of writing another three and a half page paper right now, okay? And I still got on this Zoom. And I still have talked to two people. I still sent out a three-day mini today. I still signed a customer today. I still have been in my team's inboxes today. They have seen me leading. I still went live on my personal Facebook today. I still went and exercised today. I still spent time with my husband today and went to the grocery store. I still made dinner. I still talked to my neighbors. I still had time to take a shower. I still did all of those things without making an excuse. Does it suck? Hell yes, it does, okay? But I'm gonna tell you right now, anything in life that you want to accomplish, if you keep on showing up, before you know it, you're going to accomplish it. Just like I was bitching about this schoolwork right before all of this start started happening, you guys, my friend said to me, she said, but you only have till May. And she's right, I only have till May. And I'll have another bachelor's degree. Some of you guys are probably like, why are you doing that? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because once upon a time, this little girl wanted to go to school and she wanted to graduate and she wanted to be able to pay for it out of cash. And she made a promise to herself that she would. And she did, but then she stopped and she's not a quitter. Okay, she's not a quitter. And um, so anyways when my mind was mentally right and i took three years off from nursing guys um when quarantine hit i realized i hate being home i couldn't travel for business i was about ready to kill my husband um so i said you know what i'm gonna go back i'm gonna go and be a nurse my hospital closed that i was going to go back to and the stars aligned that i would go back to the original hospital that i worked at when i first became a nurse okay got a job I started there June 1st, okay? Lo and behold, a week later, I get a call from Fairmont, which is the hospital that just closed. They offered me a PRN job. I accept it. So now I'm gonna be PRN at both hospitals that I worked at when I began my, when I began my career as a network marketer. But this time, I get to do it because I wanna be there and because I wanna take care of patients. And because the income is paying for my nursing school and paying for my kid's college. And I, I mean, I paid my tuition in cash, um, but I get to do it now because I want to. And some of you guys over the next two weeks are going to be like, Amanda, you have done lost your mind because you're going to see me working five days next week. Um, and I'm going to be working in the ER for the next two weeks, which I've never worked a day in my life in the ER. I've always been a cardiac nurse. Um, and I'm going to be really busy. But what you're still going to see is Amanda posting, Amanda talking about Thrive, Amanda showing up on calls. You'll still see me Monday night on my Monday night motivational Zoom. No, you won't see me working out as much because, I mean, <laughs> you can only be, uh, like, you can only do so many things in a day, okay? And, and sleep is kind of a priority. But long story short, I'm telling you all of this because if you get a plan, if you have a busy life, if you've got all this stuff happening, if you make the decision right now that you want to make every day count and you want to spend time with your kids, well, guess what? You can't spend that time with your kids if you don't make a way to spend time with your kids, if you don't have an income to spend time with your kids, all right? So you've got to make that decision. Like, are your excuses more important? Are your excuses more important than your family? Are your excuses more important than time? Are your excuses more important um, for you to go watch TV or to drink or to go out partying or to go sleep and hoe around? I don't know what you do, but I mean, I'm just being for real. I mean, oh, you sorry. did not just say sleep and hoe around. <laughs> I totally <laughs> did. <laughs> but my, my point is, is I, I never know what you're going to say, girl. <laughs> hey, all you hoes on this Zoom, we don't care what you do. Just work your business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, but on a for real, yes, I don't have a filter. You really don't, you don't know what I'm going to say. 
<laughs> but, but the reality of it is, and I hope what you guys took from me is that if I didn't know it, I learned it. And I kept on trying to follow people that were doing the things that I knew that was getting them to be successful. I can remember watching videos from people in my company and you guys, they were like, I remember there was like the 60 minute presentation. And still to this day, I wonder what the hell made me watch that video and why. And then you know what? That same person I follow on TikTok and I'm like, why is she so charismatic? Like, why does she suck people in so well? And, and the reality of it is guys, it's the same reason that I do. She's just who she is. Okay. And that's what I want you to realize is like your number one asset is you, but you've got to start letting like taking the onion peels away and you've got to stop allowing other people affect your decision on how you're going to work your business. Like you can't control teammates that quit. You can't control people that are assholes. You can't control all of these outside things. But what you can control is when you get up every day, what your mindset's going to be, what you're going to accomplish before you go to bed and not go to bed until you accomplish it. Like tonight, I already know, like until my paper's done, like I'm not going to bed, period, end of story. So that that's like, you've got to set the goal. Just like as we finish up this month, some of you guys are going to fall short and some of you guys are going to quit right now. You're going to quit right now because you're nowhere close to your goal. And the difference between you and me is that I won't quit. I'll keep on fighting into the last minute. I will keep on fighting because I might meet that person that needs me to change their life. And that's the difference between me and somebody else. So I want you to make that decision. Is, it, is that a priority to you? Are you on a mission to change your life and other people's lives? If the answer is yes, then you need to go in. You need to go after it and you need to go hard and you need to quit the excuses, quit the boo-hoo pity me mindset, okay? Like your sponsor quit, who cares? That was probably a blessing. Move on, show up, our team's awesome. And yeah, I mean, if you wanna be successful, we're here. So I'm gonna shut up now because I could just keep on talking all night and I could give all kinds of tips every day. I'll just keep on doing that on the, on the Dream Team page. I, well, I wanted to mention something really quick too that you mentioned the 45 second presentation. For those of you guys that are new or even if you've been in and you have not, literally you can go to Google. It is 100% free, right? Google 45 second presentation or the napkin presentation, either one of those. Mm -hmm. And you can read the PDF of what Amanda was talking about, like right now, tonight for free, download the PDF and read it. And it's not the, even that long of a read. And honestly, Amanda, I mentioned that because it's one of the first things, the first month I was in network marketing, I was Googling network marketing, like learning. And I was trying to figure out all the things. And I ran into that and a light bulb went off. I was like, oh my God, so this is what I need to be doing to make money. It was like a light bulb. So you guys, please, you know, if you, if you don't have the money to go buy a book, that is free. Google it, go read the PDF and it will change your life. I want to bring in um, Melissa Garrow. You guys don't want to get off because we've got too many good people on tonight. Melissa Garrow, I'm going to bring you in um, and we're going to jump right in. Melissa's kicking ass right now. <laughs> so since she's kicking ass, I had to have her on. And for those of you guys that want to go hoe down, you can hoe down after the Zoom, okay? <laughs> you can hoe down after the Zoom. <laughs> but for now, don't go nowhere. Melissa, I want to bring you in and I want you to share um, how you started thriving. Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm Melissa. I also actually go by Lisa as well. Um, so yeah, <laughs> um, so before Thrive, um, I had a lash business. Um, fortunately, I was able to run that business out of my home. Um, you know, since being a mom, I've always had that vision to be a stay at home working mom, right? Um, and we were, you know, at a place already where I was able to, to do that from home. So you know, between juggling the lash business and then my kids and their activities and our dogs and keeping up with workouts, like I was overwhelmed, you know? I was tired all the time, I was exhausted. I hated get a, getting up in the morning. 
um, my husband at the time, you know, when he was working full time, he would ask me and say, hey, babe, do you want to wake up, help me make breakfast or help me make lunch? And I'm like, nope, 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 can't do it. You know, <laughs> I love my sleep. I can't, I can't get up that early. Um, but yeah, I would always wake up feeling tired. I had such a negative mindset, you know, like just because I felt overwhelmed overall. And I don't know what it is about maybe just being a mom and a wife. I don't like to ask for help. Right. So that was me. And I was waking up in the morning. I felt like I was always rushing, especially on school days when my kids had school. I was that mom that was nagging at them to like hurry up and get out the door when it's really me, you know? And there were so many times, you guys, oh, so awful, where I would drop off my kids to school and at least one of them was crying because of something I said or did that morning. And unfortunately, it was like that every day. I thought, frick, this is it. You know, I think this is how life is supposed to be. You know, a moody stay-at-home mom that's doing lashes. And when I was doing the lash business, you guys, I was seeing probably six to seven lash clients a day, okay? And um, being a lash tech, I had to make my schedule available to my clients. As much as I can be quote-unquote flexible, I still had to serve, um, you know, my clients, right? So that meant miss, you know, that meant I would miss family dinners. I would miss, um, you know, the kids going to their Muay Thai classes. I would miss Christmas concerts at school. Like it was just bad. And I had enough, you know? Um, and then I saw my girlfriend, she started posting about Thrive. And even when we would get together, you guys, she would always say, Lisa, I don't drink coffee. Lisa, that mommy pouch that, you know, that I wanted to get rid of, it's gone, you know, and like, I've tried many things in the past, like, you can ask my husband, Odie, like, I tried everything, so I was super skeptic, it was just in one ear, out the other, right, I didn't want to try it, but then, you know, a couple of months in after watching her, like, I saw the changes that she had, she was happier, she felt motivated, she was positive, um, you know, and she was shrinking. And I wanted that too. So thankfully, one day she texted me, her name's Ashley, by the way, she texted me and full on asked, Lisa, you need to start Thrive or why aren't you thriving now? Like you need, you need Thrive right now. And then I was just, I don't know, I guess I was excited, right? Because it's something new. And I wanted that energy. I wanted that mood support. I wanted to shrink, right? In my sizes. So right that like right then on that night um we purchased the first month right away she helped me um she helped me you know walk through on how to order and all that kind of thing and i remember when the package came in it came in on october 31st 2018 so halloween and i hid it from my husband as soon as i had the package i grabbed it ran upstairs and hid it underneath my uh washroom sink behind like my makeup stuff right so he wouldn't see it um day one I didn't really feel anything, but then I was, you know, really excited and just pumped up to start something new. Day three, I woke up before my alarm and that was a big thing, you know, because as I said earlier, I hated the mornings and I woke up with energy. I was in a good mood. And then by day 10, like each morning got better and better. And then my husband started to notice too, like, what are you on? Why are you up before me? Like you, like you're at home. Why are you up? you know? Um, and then, yeah, like a couple months later, my husband finally said yes to the Thrive experience. So yeah, now we're thriving together. And then after that, we made the decision to why not look into the free opportunity. And yeah, here I am. <laughs> How long have you been in? Um, so I, as a promoter, it's been about a year and a half. A year and a half. Okay. So yeah. give me a little, give me a picture of what that looked like when, once you hit the promoter button, how, um, how did your business go from then till now? Yeah, so um, I hit the promoter button January 5th of 2019. And I remember on one of the Facebook group pages, Amanda actually had a post asking, you know, for new promoters to come on to a live with her on Facebook. And I volunteered because I saw it. And I was just motivated. You know, I've always... Um, I guess had a thing for side gigs, right? Like why not make extra income so I can spend more time with my kids, right? And kind of lower or shorten my, my lashing hours. Um, so January 5th was when I hit the promoter button. Um, I believe six days in, I hit VIP 800. 
And then a week later, I hit VIP 1600. And then it was crazy. Like January was a busy month because we actually traveled to Disney World for the first time as a family. And even in Disney World, you guys, like I was working away on my phone, you know. Um, and then by the end of, oh, sorry. Yeah, end of February. So the following month, I went 4K and I also got the iPad bonus at that time. And then April came and I remember for the longest time, I kept telling, you know, Twin and like my other teammates that I wasn't sure if I was going to go to conference because, you know, I had to pay it out of my own pocket. And it was a trip that I would go on by myself without my husband and my kids and, you know, going to a conference with people I don't even know. So I remember for a while, I kept going back and forth of, you know, whether I should go or not. And then one day I'm like, you know what, if I really want to make this business a thing, like I really want this to work out, I need to go to a conference. If I have to see, you know, X amount of lash clients, that, um, you know, a month prior, so be it. I'm going to go to conference. So I went to conference and um, I was so shy, didn't talk to anyone. Um, and just watching like the different leaders talking on stage, it was so, so awesome. And I remember Aaron, he actually asked, um, you know, everybody in the room, like for you, for those of you guys who are 4K, I want you to stand up right now and, you know, just say, I am 12K. And I remember standing up saying, yeah, I'm 12K, you know, and just super stoked and fired up. And then just coming home, you guys within a month. So before the end of May, I went 12K. So yeah. And then um, fast forward to now, you know, last month, our team hit 40K, which is super amazing. Um, you know, even during this whole quarantine thing, like, it was just such a good time. And everybody turned back on because we just realized how much you know, we really want this business to work and how special this opportunity is. So yeah, like our team ran and we hit 40K last month. <laughs> you guys are kicking butt. I mean, seriously, it's crazy. And you've had like, you know, you some ups and downs, but steady growth because you're consistent with your business. I always see your name. You know what I mean? I like, I know who, we have a team of thousands. I know who you are. We've met, like I, you show up. And that's the difference between somebody that's going to get to those goals and somebody that won't. And it takes patience too. I mean, I'm sure you've watched other people go faster and I'm sure, you know, there, all these things start getting in your head. Maybe I'm not going to get there. We're all human, but mm -hmm. you've stayed consistent. You show up. And as a result of that, you just hit that 40 K mark. And I would say that's a pretty damn good in a year and a half. Like that is you're ahead of the game. Um, so what do you, what tips would you give anybody on this, especially to our newer people? Like, what do you think are some income producing activities they need to do every day that without a doubt, like, I don't care what happens, you need to fit these things into your schedule so you can see six, the success that they're looking to see. Um, I think the main thing is just, um, you know, talking to people every day, whether they're new or old or people you haven't spoken to since high school, you know, get into their inbox, get to know them again and just build that relationship. Um, another thing is just staying consistent. You know, if you know that you are putting the work in, it all just comes down to timing. Right. And I think that's just something that um, like my husband and I believe together because last year, you know, I did lose the 12 K rank. Right. Um, and it was during summertime you know, and not gonna lie, I'm human, I was mopey for about, for about a week or so. Then after that, I'm like, okay, you know what, if what I'm doing right now isn't working, I got to do something else. And that's when I started to host my own living room locals. And it was maybe like four to five people, right. Um, and then I started looking more into vendor opportunities, I just wanted to get myself out there, right, let people know who I am, you know, and um, we also, as a family, just started going to church end of September last year. And right off the bat, you know, as soon as we met the pastors at our church, like we said, okay, what can we do to serve the church? So I actually started serving at the church cafe. My husband was, a, uh, you know, part of the host team. My daughter is part of the children ministry. She was volunteering there. Just whatever we can do to, you know, meet new people and just, you know, build relationships from that. So 
yeah, definitely just talk to people, be genuine, be kind, um, and then just stay consistent. Well, that's exactly what it is. I tell people all the time, you can know all the things. I don't care if you're like the number one thriver on the planet and you wear 18 patches a day. That Unfortunately, that's not going to make you money. What's going to make you money is building relationships with people, growing your network constantly. That's the golden ticket. And you don't need to know all these other things. You just need to do that. And, and your business will grow. Well, I just want to thank you so much, Lisa, for coming on today and sharing. And you're kicking ass. Keep kicking ass. Um, I want to give one last tip to everybody out there. You probably want to cut down on the hoe and around if you want to succeed. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, thank Lisa. you. <laughs> it's our joke this Zoom. I'm Quit never hoeing gonna around. Lift this down. I'm never gonna get it. Down. You gotta save the hoeing around for the weekends, y'all. Okay. <laughs> I can't. I'm not going to stop saying it. All right. Next, <laughs> I want to pull in um I want to pull in somebody that is absolutely incredible. Um I have met this amazing lady a few times and she has a heart of gold. Um she's also gone through um some things lately that would set somebody back and and a lot of people would probably start working their business, but you know, I asked her to be on a call last week and, and I, she couldn't for good reason. And this week she messaged me saying, I'm ready. And it just is so inspiring to me because I, I love that she wants to change lives and nothing's going to stop that. And I, it's just so inspiring. So Lacey, I want to bring you in and I would love for you to share um, how you started thriving and some tips with us as well. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. That's so nice what you just said. I really, really appreciate that. Um, okay, so how I got started thriving. I I didn't find a Thrive. Um, Thrive found me through my best friend. I never saw it online. I never saw anyone posting about it. My page was really, really shut down in private to just my friends and family. And so I didn't, I had no concept of the network marketing world at all. Um, now, my girlfriend called me on the phone one day, or my best friend, Michelle Roberts, she called me on the phone one day, and she told me, she was with another company at that point, and she told me, or she asked me, do you know anything about residual income? And I said, no, I don't know anything about residual income. Um, and she said, okay, go look it up, and then call me back. So I did. I got off the phone. I went and I looked it up, and I, I'm, I'm a when I'm going to like learn about something, I'm going to really learn about it. So I, I looked it up in depth and I instantly understood that it could be something profound in anyone's life. Um, so I kind of like went into it with that vision without ever even having a, a, a site on network marketing. So I called her back and I told her, you know what, I'm in. Um, we did that company for six months and I'll just say we were, we were with a shampoo company. We were selling shampoo and I knew I, all the whole time I had that vision and I kept thinking like, I'm just going to stick with this. I got to give it a couple years, few years. You know, I had that stick with it kind of mentality and consistency and eventually you'll be at the top. Um, well, I didn't really go anywhere to be honest, but I still was hopeful. <laughs> so six months into that, I don't know you guys, I'm sure everyone knows about the California fires, the paradise fires, and that's my hometown. I didn't live there when that was going on, but my whole family did, my friends, everyone. So when that happened, I had been selling shampoo for six months, and the day that happened obviously was the last day that I posted about shampoo because um, there, was, there was no way that I could post about a bottle of shampoo when everyone that I loved and knew and everyone around me had just lost everything that they had ever worked for and dreamed of in their town and their, I mean, I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to do it. I waited a month. I still couldn't do it. That kind of trauma for people doesn't go away for a very, very long time. So I didn't see myself being able to post about a bottle of shampoo for a long time. So I just stopped. Honestly, I wasn't making any money anyway. So um, I'd be like, woohoo, when I got, when I got like a $15 paycheck twice a week or twice a month, I'd be like, yay. <laughs> so, um, now this, so 
let me back up a little bit because at that six month mark, right around there, Michelle moved. She found Thrive. She moved to Thrive and she had been like, I'm not, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. She was hounding me about this. Like that's what your best friend does. Okay. If you have a best friend and you're not hounding them, hound them because your best friend should be thriving with you for sure. Um, so I didn't, I didn't want nothing to do with it. I had my long-term vision. I was going to stick with what I was doing. You know, I knew I had to stay there in order to get where I wanted to go. And, um, she just didn't let up. I mean, this is my best friend in the whole world. And it literally got to the point to where I was like swiping her. I was sending out a voicemail and I would tell my husband, now he's my husband. I'd be like, ah, I don't want to talk about that thrive shit. <laughs> you know? So anyway, anyways, I didn't tell her that for a long time afterwards. Well, then the fires happened. Then she at some point eventually got me to try this stuff and I, and I, I didn't use it right. I didn't take it correctly. I took it here and there. I was still drinking tons of coffee. So I was like, eh, it ain't, it's not for me. It doesn't really. And she's like, Lacey, for the love of God, just do it right. Like it's, it's a $150 box that you have. Let it, you know, try it the right way. So I did because I trust her. And, um, man, like, <laughs> I don't have to tell y'all because if you're on this call, you already know what these products do. When I put that in my body and I stopped with the coffee and I stopped with the timing it wrong and I drank enough water, all that stuff that you're supposed to do, it was, it was like, I think it was, was it you, Lisa? I think somebody the other day said, um, it's like the part in the Wizard Oz movie where it goes from the black and white. Yeah, yeah when it goes yeah. from that, I, I heard that and I was like, yes. When it goes from the black and white to the color, that's what thriving is like. Like everything just turned on. I, I was at school that day. I was, I was, you know, I had gone back to school at 34 years old, not because I wanted to, but because I was at a point in my life where like, hello, I'm 34 years old. I need to find a big girl job. So for me, I decided I was going to go into the medical field. I was going to do billing and coding. Absolutely had zero passion for billing and coding. I just needed to figure something out. Um, and so I was going to school. So I remember being at school that day and I had my cup of coffee because I still took it with me because I'm just silly. And, um, I realized like halfway through the day, I was, my cup was still full and that, I mean, that might seem kind of silly, but that was like a, like mind blowing to me that I hadn't, first of all, chugged the whole thing and then went to the cafe and got more and more, you know, so I dumped it out and I just knew, you know, and I just knew that was it. I, I, the next few days, we all know, you know, the next few days, like I noticed things like, um, I just noticed things. I'll, I'll skip through all that. We all know what Thrive does. I noticed things that switched something in my brain to where now I had something. For all those people that I couldn't bring a bottle of shampoo to, I could bring this to them and it would help them. And it would, you know, I knew I had my hands on something that could literally change lives, you know, and it could change people that had been through anything. It could help anybody who had been through anything. So, yeah, it's so, it is so powerful. You're right. Like it gets so daunting actually trying to describe thrive to somebody that hasn't oh. tried it. It's like, just try it. Like, yeah. come on, you're on my nerves at this point. Oh, yeah. So how long have you been in now? Uh, so June 8th would have been 16 months. So 16 and a half months. So tell me a little bit about your journey with Lavelle. Like, I mean, because you were with this shampoo company, you didn't make anything and now you came over here. So you're making money though over here, huh? <laughs> yes. Wow. That's the part that's going to tear me up. Um, yeah. I mean, so my journey with, with Lavelle has been, I, I came in. I kind of, I obviously nobody, we don't know what we're doing when we do this, you know? So I didn't know what I was doing. I listened to Michelle. I did everything that she told me to do. Um, and that grew me. I mean, I just listened. I didn't, it didn't matter. Like if I didn't want to, if I was uncomfortable, I started out knowing that whatever I 
was uncomfortable with, if I let that rule me, I was going to be held back. Like your uncomfort can hold you back if you don't step forward and get out of it. And then when you step forward and get out of it, it's like, oh, like it opens up so much. Um, so I, I hit my VIP 800. I, I mean, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I signed up my mom and my boyfriend at the time and hit, hit it. And which is actually how you should do it, I guess. Anyways, I missed VIP 1600. Um, about two weeks into being a promoter and, and really working this business. And I had been growing my network because of that shampoo company, you know, so I had, I, my page was pretty good. Um, I lost my Facebook page. Like, I mean, one day I tried to post something and it wouldn't let me post, wouldn't let me post. I'll never forget. I was trying to post a picture of a, of a, an activate. It wouldn't let me post and it kicked me out of my page and it never, it didn't let me log back in. I lost my whole flipping page nine years I had that page. Um, and I was like, Oh my God, like, what am I going to do? I couldn't get in. I could not get back in. And so I made a decision that instead of like pouting about it and taking that as a sign to give up or whatever, I started a new Facebook page and I started for totally fresh. And, um, I took it as an opportunity to push through something instead of an opportunity to curl up and die. What I wanted to do, you know? So, um, so I, I did that and I worked really hard and, and I knew that I had to work hard cause I was starting from nothing. And so I actually hit 4k the month after I, I started with that new Facebook page. The month after that I hit 12k and I sat at 12k for a year. Um, uh, it was a lot, like I said, I just sat at 12K. I mean, I was pulling more volume every single month, but I, and I was working hard, but I sat at 12K for a whole year. Um, and then I hit 40K March of this year, um, 80K last month, and I'm holding 80K this month. I and as far as, as, far as that huh? you just went 80K, like it's so, you know, because a lot of people, if they're sitting at 12K and they just can't get over that hump in a year. Yeah. They, they start to just go backwards because mentally they get in their own way. That's really the only thing that happens. And that's what I hope everybody on here hears is that, look, these people, you know, when you see somebody that's an 80K, a 200K, a 40K, they didn't just wake up one day there. They have gone through struggles. They have been stuck at a place. They have, and you know, we've had this, I've had people in our business that have come in and literally been, if no Ks. I'm talking, didn't get their VIP bonus. They've been sitting there just thriving free. And one day they were like, oh, it's two years in. I think I'm going to actually work this and get out of my head. And on the next day they're 12K. I mean, it really is a mental decision and to stick with it. Just keep sticking with it because it always happens. Oh, yeah. You just have to run into the right people. And obviously that happened. Something happened on your team to take you to the 40 and 80 K very quickly. And yep. it's so exciting when it does happen. Cause it's like, Oh my God. Um, so what tips would you give the people on today from the time that you've been in and, you know, just being stuck at a, you know, maybe there's somebody on tonight that's been stuck at 12 K for a year and they're thinking it's never going to happen. What kind of advice or tips <laughs> do you have? So I would, I would definitely say like, you have to, you have to remember why you're here. You know, the number 12 never, ever, ever took away from what being in this business and having these products to offer people does for me. Um, I get to wake up every day and I get to offer a tired mama a chance to go to the park with her kids. I get to offer someone who's been struggling with their baby weight a chance to put a bikini on in the summertime. I get to offer someone who's living on food stamps like I was when I got here a chance to not have to look at their bank account before they go to the grocery store. Like the moment that I stopped caring about the, not that I didn't care, don't get me wrong. We all love money. I'm not going to lie. We, we want the paycheck. But the moment that I switched in my brain that I'm doing this for you for other people and not me is the the moment that I knew that the number never would matter. I was going to keep doing this forever regardless. Um, and so you have to remember why you're here. If you don't have a passion for these products, you're probably taking them wrong. Number one. Um, 
or you're on the wrong DFT. Like, I don't know, like you have to be passionate about this. Um, one thing that's going to make you passionate about this is your why, you know, you have to really, really, really have a why. And it's not, it, it can't be my why is my kids. It can't be my why is my bank account. Like get specific. What do you want for your kids? You want the college for your kids? What college do you want? What do you want their apartment to look like? Design it in your head. Like your why has to be so specific and so important and, and that you'll fight for it. You know what I mean? Because this is a fight. If anybody ever, ever came to me and asked me if this is easy, I tell them, no, this is not easy. This is simple and anybody can do it, but it takes work. It takes hard work. You know, I, my goal is to be a millionaire. And do I think that to be a millionaire, I get, get to like sit back and like post a couple times and like hope that people comment on my post. I don't think that's how you become a millionaire. I think you bust your butt to become a millionaire. So, you know, find your why work, work. That's like a business. You know, if you go and you get a job at Walmart and then you never, ever show up, are you going to show up on your paycheck day and like wonder where your money is? <laughs> like, no, you, you know, you have to go to work and you have to go to work every single day. You treat this like a business. Um, one thing I heard you say, Lisa, when I was brand new, I think I was in my VIP period when I heard you say this because early I started plugging in, which is another tip. You guys plug in, get on these zooms. Um, as many as you can. And one thing that I heard you say was any business doesn't profit in the first year. Like most businesses, if you go and you have a, a you know, a storefront or whatever, it's not going to probably profit for your first year. So I kind of went in there with that mindset. I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to like work hard. And in a year, I'm going to expect to see some money. Um, you guys, I've made more money in the last 16 and a half months. When I look at my total earnings, I it literally like brings, takes my breath away. It, I've made more money doing this than I've ever made in my life doing anything else, you know? And, um, it's just crazy. Um, another tip that I would definitely say is if you're a leader and here's how you know, if you're a leader, because you say you are, if you, you're a leader, if you say so, you don't even have to have one promoter under you, but if you, intend to, if you want to, you know, you're a leader, say so, you're a leader. Um, and if you are one and you have a team underneath you and you have people signing up, I know that people, some people are going to disagree with me on this, but I strongly believe that you reach out and you show up to every single person that comes through your website. Um, you have a responsibility to the people that come through your website to let them know that you're there for them to show your face, show up to them. I'll be honest. Like I know that some of my people reach up to, um, Stephanie, Lisa, Michelle, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I'm very aware of that. So am I going to be offended if someone, if one of them reaches down or whatever, you know, just know that your team is your team and the people that are in between you are your team too, but don't let them stop you. Like some of my strongest people that I work with are levels that I'm not even getting paid on. Um, so that's really important. Oh man. I mean, I have a lot of tips. I don't know. <laughs> There's so many. I know I, well, yeah. you know, I was just going to say, I'm starting to bring in, um, 80 K's on my 200 K call on Tuesdays. I got to have you on one. Cause you could like talk for, I could talk uh, to you for an hour. Your tips you. are awesome. I just want to let you know, I appreciate you so much. You're, you are absolutely a warrior and you know, I've been praying for you lately and Thank I appreciate you. you getting on tonight and you guys, I hope you guys took what Lacey said to heart because her tips are golden. Thank you. Golden golden tips. Um, we can't get enough of them, but Lacey, thank you so much for hopping on. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Thank you. You guys, last but not least, you are definitely not going to go anywhere because I'm bringing one of my favorite hoes on. One of my favorite hoes. You know who you are, Talissa. Unmute yourself. Hey. What's up, ho? <laughs> I can't. I'll never forget that. Like, we need to put that on shirts or something. I, we have to. I we or have her. to. What'd she say? I don't care if you're hoeing around. <laughs> I, can't. I can't. That was the best. Oh, Amanda, what are we going to do with her? Um, I mean, we literally have to censor Zooms now when we have Amanda on them. What has this world come to? Um, so 
you guys, if you don't know Talissa, Talissa is literally probably one of my favorite people on the planet. She is awesome, real, funny as all get out. And she has been, gosh, I think just about everywhere in this business, up, down, all around, back and forth. <laughs> you definitely have a story to share and people definitely don't want to miss this. So I don't want to waste any more time. I would love for you to kind of more, you know, quick version of how you found Thrive, but let's really just jump into your journey because I think there's a lot of lessons in it and a lot of things people need to hear. For sure. So you guys, hi, my name's Talissa. Hi guys. Um, and so I actually signed on as a promoter in 2017. Um, May 2017, I was with a previous business, um, completely working from home full time at the at the time. Uh, at the beginning of network marketing, though, I worked full time. I was going to college full time at night, and uh, I just wanted to. Um, I think mainly I wanted to start to be a part of something, but also I seen the big picture of things. And so I wanted to be able to work full time from home. And so anyway, fast forward, cause I'm going to speed through this, you guys, I'm going to be in and out. Okay. Um, so I was with another business. I was working from home full time. Um, and I decided to make the leap. I tried, a prod I tried the product, I tried a sample pack. Amanda had sent one to me and to Kayla. We tried it together and holy cow. Um, I actually started as a customer first. I just didn't dive into the business side because I wanted to make for sure that I was making the right decision because I was coming from another business. So I was gonna leave everything behind and start over. And so even what I had wasn't, um, even what I had, it wasn't, fully what it once was, it still was all that I had and it was paying my bills, you know? And so anyway, I started as a customer first. I quickly, 15 days in, I switched to a promoter and y'all, we went balls to the wall. As soon as I jumped in within 48 hours, I went VIP 1600, 1800, 800. Um, I went 4k within my first week did it again on my husband's account by my first 30 days I was 12k so everything moved very quickly for me not only for my account but for my husband's account or my ex-husband's account um it went very 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 quickly for me and so um it took me about I can't tell you the exact time frame I know I can on my my beginning um, I went 40k and then it took about a year and then a year I hit 80k when we were the month that we all went to San Diego on the lifestyle getaway. And this whole time, you guys, from switching from the company I was before, I walked on faith. Some people came with me, but really, I think I had two people that came with me. And those two people that came over with me, you guys, from my last business, um, no longer work the business anymore. So um, there's that. Built everything, everything I have now, again, from scratch with new people. Um, and so, uh, with that being said, when we went to San Diego, that month is when I went, I hit 80 K you guys, what, that was like two years ago, um, going on. Yeah. Two years ago. Um, I have been at 80 K you guys, I've had a lot of life happen. Things went very fast for me. I didn't ever have to go back to work. I still continue to work at home full time. I had four kids, um, a spouse, um, and my life has been like this, you guys, you know how business sometimes, and I just want you guys to realize this too, your business will have really, really high moments. And then the next month it might be kind of slow, or you might feel like you stay in that low Valley and then you're going to have a high moment. And then you might, you know, plateau out a little bit, and then you may have a little dip and then you might go back up again. And that's okay. That's just the way business is and know that that's normal. And it's not you. Okay. You are not the problem. It's not necessarily you. Of course, if you're, what you're doing is not working, change it up and do something else. That's why we jump on these Zooms because we pick each other's brains and we kind of apply it to our, our business and our life, right? So, but just I want you to realize that that is normal in business, okay? It's not always going to be sunshine, butterflies, and rain glitter every single day of your life. I wish it would, but it's not going to. And it's not going to in your business, so just realize that. So my life has been like this, you guys, like a freaking roller coaster that has scary freaking... I don't know if anybody knows I'm in Oklahoma and we have like a six flags thing and like they have a fright fest. And so when you get on these roller coasters at fright fest in, in, in October, um, then these scary things jump out at you. Right. 
pretty much what my life has been like. Like Lisa wasn't joking when it's been like all over the place. I've had my highs. I've had my lows. I have been through it, but I'm getting to it. Okay. And so listen, life hit me hard in November and uh, I'm going through a divorce. Well, with that, my life has been flipped upside down. You guys, um, I decided to leave my house, start over, I'm in a rent house. I had to take my ass back to work. And so I am back to work and not necessarily because my check's not going to pay my bills. It's more of a security thing for me. I'm a single mom now. I have two children that I have to take care of and raise for sure solely on myself. And for me, so is a security thing. But you guys, what hit me hard, and I just want you guys to realize this, if you ever have to go through this or life happens, um, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. And you're going to get through it. I had to go back to a job. You guys, when I left to leave for network marketing, a lot of people, um, were like, I can't believe you're leaving for network marketing. Like that's not a stable income. Like, what are you doing? Da, 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 da. All this stuff. Like it was a big deal at my job. And like, they accused me of like marketing people at my job and bringing them into my business because I was in marketing and sales. Anyways, it was a big deal. And so it was a big blow up when I left my company that I was working for at the time. You guys, <clears throat> I'm going through all my stuff. I needed a job. They tried to recruit me back. I am now back at the same place that I left when I left for network marketing. And so not only did I go through all the mess and the shaming from Lee when I left, now I had to go through it all over again about, oh, I guess it didn't work out for you oh, you're back. Oh, this, that, and the third. So it's been a lot for me with dealing with everything, the new situation of my life, um, the new situation of trying to be a single mom and trying to figure out how to work this business and take care of my kids and work a full-time business and work this business at the same time. And also, um, and try to be there for my team. You guys, I'm not perfect. I've let my team down. I have an amazing team and I'm sure you'll hear once, uh, so some of my, some more of my team come on when Lisa brings them on, but summer love is one of my best friends and one of, one of my strongest leaders. And I would not have the business I have if, if it wasn't for her. And so I appreciate every single person on my team and there's moments and it's okay in your life when you have your, there, you guys, there were moments I want to lock myself in a closet. I did not want to come out. I didn't want to talk to another single person. I didn't even want to look at myself in the mirror and that's okay. So when you have those moments and life is happening to you and then you guys have your leaders like this is going on and this is going on and this is going on. Know that it's okay that if you have those moments and you're going through life, your business is still going to be here. Your business is going to still be here. Hold on. I'm sorry, guys. My daughter was calling me. You know what I was thinking about through what you were talking about is I am sure because I have been in a place, you know, within the last couple of years where I literally did not want to work my business. I was going through a personal thing. I didn't recruit anyone. I didn't. And guess what happened? I still got a check every week from the work that I had put in before. And if I would have had a waitressing and, and bartending job, I, if I couldn't take off work and if I did, I wouldn't have gotten paid. And through all of the ups and downs that have happened in your life recently, whether you worked or not, you got a paycheck. No, absolutely. And so with this business, it's going to be there for you. And even if you have to Maybe you have to check out for a little bit. You get with your upline and say, look, I've got this going on. Can you reach down to my team? I reached out to Kayla and I was like, look, I got all this going on. If you can be there and reach out to them and help them, like seriously, that would help me so much. And so realize you're not alone in this business. If you were to open up a brick and mortar business, you guys, it would be you and you have to pay your employees, right? But in this business, you have a family. You have a team of people rooting for you, wanting you to win helping you and that you can reach up and reach out. But the only thing I have to say with all this, no matter what you have going through in your life, reach up and reach out for help. Maybe you don't want to tell all your details. That's your business. You don't have to, but just explain to them like, Hey, this is what I have going on and tell your team, tell your team. Like I put my team in a message. I was like, look, you guys, I haven't been real public about this and I still not public about things, but 
I'm not real public. I, I'm going, this is what I'm going through. So if you see me in and out, this is why you see me in and out. Make sure you guys have that good communication, but also know that um, you still need to somehow, like for me, I knew I couldn't be all about it, but I knew what these products still did for me. I knew why I joined this business. I knew I wanted to help people. I knew I wasn't going to stop taking my Thrive. Well, I'm posting pretty much on social media every day anyway, at least once or twice. And in and, and my really bad moments, I was barely posting maybe once a day. And I just really focused on sharing at least my patch or what it was doing for me. I still continue to post, but I have been in network marketing long enough that I knew that if I stopped altogether, it was going to be really, really hard to get back going again. And so I still continue to post. Now that I've been in the routine that I've been in, I've been back to work in the uh, workforce since December. I kind of have a routine and you guys kind of get a routine. If you guys still work full time, y'all put in the chat, drop a heart. Um, because I want you to know that if you still work full time and your goal is to make this a full time income, you can do that. You just have to make sure that you use your time wisely. When you go to the bathroom, maybe make, make a post like my bosses are on me like like stink on poop. I'm not even playing because this business, my bit, my job that I have now, look at all you got, look at all you hard workers. Look at you. You guys are freaking dedicated. You guys are some boss freaking babes. If you're working full time, you're, you're going to hit those dreams and goals because you have the drive to do it. And dudes, um, I forget we have men on here too. Um, so just know that you can do it because, um, they watch my social media like crazy because this is the job that I had when I left net for network marketing before. And so I am semi careful about when and how I post, but realize you have a lunch break. Use your lunch break. When you get up in the morning, every single day, post you using your, your, your vitamins, your shakes and your patches. Um, if you go to the bathroom, use that time to answer messages, to message people. Um, and for me, I just make sure I'm always putting out content, you guys. Ah, uh, did we lose her? Or did you guys lose me? No, we lost her. Okay, we lost her. Well, you guys, if you guys are, I mean, how many of you guys are so glad you got on tonight? <laughs> like these ladies are so amazing. And um, I know Talissa was about to wrap it up anyways, but oh my gosh, like just hearing everybody's so different and we all go through things and it's not just this quick road to success. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people on here that you wish you were moving at a faster pace, or maybe you feel even stuck, but I want to remind you guys to have fun and know that this is something that isn't going anywhere. You know, just wake up every day, enjoy what you do and thrive, you know, and if you do that, then eventually you're going to run into those. Here, you're back. Sorry, my, I don't know what happened. My electricity went off and I was on my laptop. So the Wi-Fi girl, off. That oh. I was on a zoom the other day and the same, my phone died. I had no idea. It was like oh on no gosh. percent. I was like, oops, I just cut I'm off. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyways, what I was saying, I don't even know what the last thing you guys heard. Just know that no matter what you are going through, you can pick this right back up. If you're working full time, you can, you still have the same amount of time as everyone else. And to be honest, I found I was more, I find that I'm more intentional working full time and doing this than when I wasn't working. Does that make sense? When I wasn't working and I was just home full time, it was like you had all the time, but you had really no structure. You had to make sure you had that made that structure yourself. But when you were working full time, you know. The Wi Fi network isn't connected to the internet. So sorry. Take a look at the help section in your Alexa app. Thank you, Alexa. Um, and so. Uh, you have structure, you know, like, in the, you got to get up in the morning, make your post about your one, two, three, you guys, I'm going to give you a tip. Snapchat is huge. I get a lot of business from Snapchat. So I really make sure to post my thrive on my Snapchat. Um, your stories, 
your Facebook. You can do one thing on one platform and you can go ahead and save it and put it on everywhere else. Your lunch break, um, answer messages when you go to the bathroom if you need to, when you get off and in the evening times. I like to post three times a day. And me being so busy, that really works for me. And so three times a day um, is my main focus for um, my posting. But at the end of the day, no matter what you're going through in life, um, we all have life, you guys. We all have life happens, um, and that's okay. You don't have – it's not going to be rainbows and butterflies and glitter every single day. But just know that your upline's there to help you or somebody in your sponsorship is if your upline has left. Reach out. Explain to them what's going on short and sweet that you might need help. But also know if you're working this full time, that's okay too. You can still work this business and be very, very successful. You just have to figure out how bad you want this and why you want this and uh, be intentional with your time. I love it. Like, I don't quit. Don't anybody ever quit because life happens. Don't quit because life happened and maybe your team went backwards. Like, don't quit, guys. Just know that it's a bump in the road and when you're ready to go. But I think one of the biggest things that you said, Talissa, that I hope everybody really, really heard is no matter what is happening in life, don't ever stop posting. I'm sorry, but y'all know, and I'm about to get real, real here. But even if you're going through a divorce, someone dies, you're in a fight with your best friend, your kid's on drugs, y'all are still on Facebook. You're still on social media. And you get a post ready, make it, steal someone else's for God's sakes. But whatever you do, don't just go silent with your business. Because like you said, Talissa, you were smart. You knew that that's not an option. Like I can go through all these things in my life. I can stick, take a step back from my business. But one thing I can't do is let the public know that I've taken a step back from my business. Like it needs to look like I still use these products because when I'm ready to jump back in, I need to have people that were still watching. You can't have, you know, a month of no nobody posting anything about business and all of a sudden people are wondering where the heck you're at. You know what I mean? You're kind of losing that momentum. So I think it's just so huge. And, you know, I think the other thing too is I always think about what it would be like if I wasn't, with this group of people in this company when I went through, you know, what I was going through and what you went through what you're going through. And, you know, Lacey just went through something. When we go through these things, it's like, I can't even imagine not having you guys, like uh, this huge family of people, people checking in on you. Like I think mm -hmm. about my life before network marketing and I'm like, dang, I didn't really have no friends. All I did was work like you just, it's just a family. And I think that that you just, people have to realize it's way more than some business, you know, and that's so cool. That's what's so cool about this. And when you said we have, you know, there's a lot of people on this zoom that have stuck us out the last hour and a half. And, you know, to me, they're all rock stars. I mean, they're not hoeing around on the weekends. They're, <laughs> they're, they are definitely 100% work in this business and you know I it's inspiring it's so inspiring none of us are hoe bags <laughs> we're, we're working our businesses <laughs> I can't I can't I'm gonna be laughing all dang night I swear to god I am <laughs> I can't stop okay all right calm down Lisa simmer down all right you guys I Talissa thank you I've got to thank everybody Talissa um gosh we had Lacey on we had Melissa on we had, um, what's her face on? Hobag. <laughs> Amanda. We had Amanda on. And you guys, you guys are on the best team ever. Like, we really are on the best team ever. Like, seriously, 100%, the most awesomest team on the planet. And I'm just glad and thankful for each and every one of you. And I'm really, really appreciative that you take the time out of your day to get on our Zooms and I was on um, Amanda's Monday night and hers went like an hour and a half. Like <laughs> me and Amanda just don't know when to shut up. So we have these ridiculously long Zooms. But those of you guys that are on with us, I mean, I just think about, God, how hungry I was. Like I was sitting on things. I was like listening to Zoom after Zoom recordings, like getting on every call. I couldn't get enough because I was so hungry to learn anything, just any little tip and 
any little thing I might, might not be doing that I could be doing that could change my business forever. And, you know, I just know that at the very least, those of you guys that stuck through this call tonight, not only did you get a few tips, but you made friends and that's, that's even cooler. Um, but I love you guys, everybody. Um, even if you're a hoe, I love you too. Um, <laughs> well, I was a hoe once too. Um, I'm stopping. I can't. I have to stop. Amanda, what did you do to me tonight? You're crazy. I'm you're a crazy hoe. Influence, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you are one crazy hoe. <laughs> I can't. I literally, I'm crying. Like I, I've been crying to myself. Like when my phone is muted, people would think I was crazy. I'm glad there's like no hidden cameras anywhere looking at me. Um, but you know what, Amanda, your story is always so inspiring. I mean, I learned some things about you tonight that I didn't even know. How is that possible? Um, we, we learn something different every time we share our story, but I just appreciate all you ladies. Thank you guys for hopping on. Thank you to all of our participants, our guests. We appreciate you. We love you. We'll see you next Thursday. Same time, same place, new guests, same link. So save it in your phone. You know what? I've decided I I'm doing this whole thing wrong. I keep inviting too many people on, but it's because I just love stories. So next week I'm going down. I, okay. I started at five and we went like 15 minutes after, but then I forgot I had Amanda on tonight and she's like long winded like me. Um, so I should have probably only had two guests. If that would have worked. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm good. I'm bound and determined to get this Zoom to exactly an hour. It will happen one day. Um, but until then, you guys should definitely stick around because you never know what you're going to hear. Um, <laughs> you never know what you're going to hear for sure. Love you guys. See you guys next Thursday. Bye, guys. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Lacey. Thanks, Alyssa. Thanks, Melissa.